5.30, I will call the public works meeting to order. Um, we'll start with roll call. Alderperson Dollinger. Here. Alderperson Ramey. Here. Alderperson Rust. Present. Alderperson Necker is here. Uh, we will find Alderperson Peterson. He's in Iowa right He's now. in Iowa. Oh, that's right. He did tell me. So he is excused. Yeah. Um, okay. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I think we will skip number four. I think everybody knows everyone here, so I think we're, we're good to go. Uh, we'll go to number five, uh, approval of minutes from July 9th, 2024. So moved. Second. Okay, motion is made second. Did any other discussion on those minutes? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Several votes aye, those are approved. Thank for discussion. Number six, resolution number 45, 24, 25, resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter a contract with Human Mechanical Incorporated to upgrade the heating, ventilating, and air conditioning system in the administrative building at the wastewater treatment facility. I guess this would go to Jordan. <laughs> Jordan, thank you. Okay. Yes. And um, so mostly good news, but obviously there's some negatives that I'll, I'll try to talk through as well. The good news is that this is a project that's been working its way through the CIP for several years. We had $550,000 budgeted, which is what has also been um, moving forward for several years. Um, it's just a really critical project for our overall administrative building, um, not only for the comfort of the employees, but also um, that building has our lab. So very strict requirements for temperature and humidity in the lab. Um, we recently sealed and painted our locker rooms there because there was mold. And so this project would improve the ventilation and the, the heating and air conditioning for that. Um, some of you know that the backup servers for the city, um, you know, the main ones are at City Hall, but the backup servers for those are at the wastewater plant as well as our own servers. So obviously uh, temperature, humidity control is um, very important there and uh the dinosaur that we have currently serving that room uh we've seen mechanical contractors come in and just shake a little bit because they're nervous to, to work on that so um really it'll be nice to see that done um one of the big things that um, we've added to the scope of this project and that's part of the reason for the need for a budget transfer is that we've added full controls and automation to this um, Mike has some familiarity with this with some of our other facilities and fortunately the low bid is the same system and the same contractor that Mike uses so there will be some familiarity yeah. some overlap there essentially this just does a much better job of uh, controlling the, the temperature obviously but also allowing us to modify some things virtually or remotely um, and so I think and then it should save some we were, we were shown some demonstrations that showed how it can make things more efficient. You know, just the system itself can sense when something maybe isn't as, uh, the heat isn't as needed or whatever. So um, we're really looking forward to that, but that is one of the reasons that it was more expensive than originally budgeted. Um, so just looking at the, but oh, I did want to also mention that uh, we have an in-house electrician, Josh Lampy, and he's going to be doing all the lighting as part of this upgrade. And so that saves quite a bit of money uh, instead of it being a much larger part of the project. I think it's going to be $5,000 for equipment and that's essentially it. So that's a good piece of news from my perspective. Um, so on the negative side, um, you know, it is more expensive than we had budgeted. Um, the biggest reason for that is the controls. Um, and so um, we have saved some money on some other projects in that section of our our CIP. This is part of the section of the CIP that's over buildings. And so there are a handful of projects. This one's over budget. Other projects are under budget. But overall, um, in talking with Caitlin Krieger, we're still about 110,000 um, that we may be short. And so our proposal is that we transfer that money from another CIP account. This is for non building. Um, there's a, a very large amount of money in that for this year, um, mostly for interceptor projects that are still working their way through a very slow federal bureaucratic process. And so there's plenty of funding in that that we won't be spending in 2024. So um, Travis and, and Caitlin and I are meeting tomorrow to go through kind of how 2024 is looking and then start planning for 2025. But 
I'm very comfortable with this approach. Um, transferring some money from that other CIP account helps kind of get through uh, this overage. And um, I think the project will be really successful. We did have three bidders for the project. Uh, Kleeman was the low bidder, a pretty good group of, of bids to show that we had a good specification. So overall, I'm really encouraged by the project and, and hope um, you and the council will be supportive of transferring those funds and letting us proceed with a little bit. Okay. Uh, first of all, I'm glad that we're going with the same controls that we have. That, that's, that's, I think that's just a smart way to go, no matter what, even if the bid was even if it costs us a little bit more, I think you're better off staying with the same company. You start fooling around with you from one to the next, and it's just, a, I think it's a nightmare. So I'm glad that they were the ones that came in. Uh, second of all, I guess I'm going to ask, uh, what about uh, supply issues? I know, uh, having gone through this a year ago myself at, at, at uh, school I work at, um, it was, uh, there was a little bit of a challenge in getting units. Um, I know this is sometimes, how, how are they on that? Is that, is that, are they, they know that, how that the uh, process is going to go with that or are they, are they going to be available for us on time and things like that in a timely fashion? They should and so AECOM is the engineering company that designed this for us. Okay. They did quite a bit of research into how what the lead time is on various pieces of especially the bigger mechanical equipment and they put into the contract the, the schedule that okay. this contractor is expected to, to live with okay. by the contractor agreeing to the, the bidding and, mm -hmm. and the scope and the contract um he's basically saying yes that's reasonable i can do it within that time frame so um we have not met with the contractor yet with like a pre-construction sure. meeting just because the contract usually is you know approved yeah. and signed before that happens but i haven't heard any concerns about that kevin i don't know if you have any insight to share on that process but what is the timeline basically um we're looking to have this work done over the winter months mm -hmm. and so we're looking at november through probably february um, so obviously temporary heat will be um, a consideration. Um, we are basically vacating any, so much of the drop ceiling that's there, which is also old and has mold in parts of it, um, is gonna be fully replaced as part of the project. Um, and so to make the contract as low price as possible and to let the contractor move quickly, we're basically gonna move anybody that has, like my office, a couple other offices, move into temporary spaces for that time and basically let the contractor have the space to do the ceiling grid, the mechanical work above there uh, all at once without kind of messing around with keeping us in place. So in any case, that's probably one of our biggest considerations is we're trying to do it right kind of over those winter months and uh, hopefully uh, we'll be able to find temporary heat. And <laughs> but it, it doesn't sound like that'll be too big a problem. Um, one thing, I don't know if you knew this, but uh, our, our buildings are mostly heated by digester gas. Okay. And so um, we use very little natural gas for heat, um, especially um, when the dryer is not running. And so um, that's kind of one neat thing is that we want to make sure this contract still uses that digester gas as our primary that's source of heat. Um, and it doesn't smell. Believe it or not. I thought you might be wondering. Yes, thank you. I was. I was just thinking maybe in her. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, ooh. <laughs> Can we all do that? Is there any uh, asbestos treatment that has to be done with this at all? There's a small amount that we know of. Okay. Um, and then we also simplified the contract by saying anything else that might be of a concern will be uh, investigated and remediated by the city okay. prior to the contractor. Okay. Um, obviously, sometimes. Um, insulation around piping things like that is what sure. can contain asbestos we are not aware of anything other than um if you've been to the plant the exterior uh like wallboard mm -hmm. on our main buildings it's like a pebbly type brown yeah. um material and that's fine but underneath there is a thin layer of wallboard that is asbestos containing we know that and so at least one spot in the contract the contract will have to penetrate that so they know that that's their responsibility to hire a contractor to get that part of it done right. Uh, anything else, we're going to investigate and remediate ourselves so they don't charge us for that. We're afraid that if we left things like that kind of open, then they might add a pretty big number because they wouldn't know what to expect. Yeah. So we're yeah. just going to handle it ourselves. Good. Good question. What yeah, I have a quick question. Uh, since it's straddling two years, is that if, and you're, I know you're working with Caitlin, but for, for the budget, is that going to 
be an issue for that project that you're borrowing from or it shouldn't be typically cip monies are allowed to carry over okay. it, it covers kind of a two-year span okay um and so i haven't heard any concern like that and is this this has happened before where we can take some from one pot and put it into another and that's fine cool the main thing is communication yes yeah. that they know everyone knows doing. yeah so it's on the up and up okay any other questions okay you got some open promotion motion okay. to approve second motion made and seconded uh any other discussion all in favor aye, aye. aye. any opposed chair votes aye that's approved Great, thanks, Jordan. Uh, next meeting date is August 13th, 2024. Open for a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you very much, everyone.